right, we're back for the second part of the Modern League with the Obliterate Zoo deck. If you want to look for a deck tech on this deck, it's in the first part of this video, which I will link to in the comments. Uh, we are 0-2. We lost to Teamer Splinter Twin with Termogoyfs, and we lost to Bring to Light Scape Shift. Yesterday the time to queue was pretty high, so I decided to just call it at two matches. Hopefully we will be able to find opponents a little bit quicker today, so there's not a lot of downtime here. I do like this deck that we're playing. Um, it has some good openings, and then it also has a good late game because of Obliterate. So we're on the draw here. Let's see what our hand looks like. So we have turn one, Wild Nakadal. Turn two, Fetch a Sacred Foundry, Play Feast Main. Uh, Life from the Loam doesn't do very much in this hand, but second Xenagos is also pretty bad, but I'm going to go ahead and keep this because our opponent mulliganed. So if our opponent is having a stumbling start, then we're going to be able to just make three threes on turn one and two. So this is Aether Vial, we're playing against Merfolk probably, could be Slivers. Okay, so there's another land, so we're most of the way to Xenagos already. So we could be in trouble if our opponent is playing Merfolk and they have multiple lords enough to get their guys bigger than 3-3 three, three because right now we're relying on these 3-3s. Three, Looks like our opponent wants to race. I am okay with that. I'm going to go ahead and fetch the Sacred Foundry untapped so that I can play the Fleece Main Lion. I could play the planes, but then our Nakadal's only a 2-2. Um, what I'm expecting to happen here is we're going to fetch Sacred Foundry, attack, play Fleece Main Lion, and then our opponent is going to spreading seize our Sacred Foundry, but we have a windswept teeth to go and get another one. So we can keep up the pressure from our 3-3s. opponent has to read Fleece Man Lion, so this is probably a Curse Catcher. Yeah. Uh, curse Catcher doesn't really do much against us. It's just a body for his lords to pump up. If he attacks with Mutavault, I'm not going to block it. If he attacks with Curse Catcher, I will block it because he would need to have two lords in play for the curse catcher to trade with the fleece main lion move this member um... yeah there's not really anything we can do about that it does hit him for four life so we're still putting pressure on even though he's killing our guy we'll see whether he drops in a lord of atlantis or whatever off of the aether vial Okay, so no Lord. Um, I'm going to go ahead and play this and then attack. I'm 
me go ahead and fetch a tapped sacred foundry and then play life from the loam get back both our fetch lands just in case we want to play for obliterate this game okay I was actually hoping he would sack the curse catcher try and disrupt us a little but he obviously just wants to put the pressure on as well so next turn we have to choose between Xenagos and Elspeth um, Elspeth will have more loyalty but Xenagos will make a bigger creature so I think a lot of it depends on what he does this turn if he puts a Lord in then the size on the creature won't really matter so I'll play Elspeth if he does not then I'm gonna play Xenagos and keep back the 2-2 two -two. So we're going to eight here. He only has three cards in hand. Okay, two cards in hand. Um, and his Aether Vial is on three. So this is a Meryl Redre is my guess. I don't know. Okay, Kira. Um, Kira doesn't really change our plans. Of course, we draw path right after Kira. Um, and this does affect itself, yes. Does this affect Elspeth? No, because it's only his creatures. Okay. So I'm going to play... Well, let's see. I have another basic plan in my deck, so yeah. I'm going to play Xenagos. I'm definitely going to make a creature, and then we need to decide what we're going to do with these creatures. If my opponent attacks with everything next turn, let's just let's do the math for if they have a lord and if they don't have a lord. So if they don't have a lord but they do have a land, they're attacking for two, four, five, six, eight exactly. So we would need to have a blocker. If they have a lord but not a land, so like let's ignore the thing that they're gonna draw because it's not affecting the, their plans for the game. So let's say they have a Meryl Redre they will attack for three five seven nine so again we need a blocker so I'm gonna play around a playable Lord or a playable untapped land and attack with just the wild Nakatl and I'm gonna play one sweat teeth or did I already play a land? Yeah, I guess I did. Okay. So that doesn't actually matter because we can't path anything anyway. Um, so he keeps the vial on three. So I'm expecting a redre. He doesn't probably have Master of Waves in his hand. He might have it in his deck. Uh, that would make a big chunk of guys to block that would have protection from our satyr. Okay, so he has the land, and he's just animating the Mita Vaults. And then I expect everything to come in here. Okay, so he just sends in the two twos. So what we can do is we can block a Mita Vault, trade our guy. Um, so let's assume that he has a Redre. We're going to block here. We're going to take five, go to three, and he's going to have a bunch of two twos. Um, If we play Elspeth and plus on the Nakatl, we're only one damage away from killing him. Uh, 
but I don't know how we're going to get that one damage in unless we top deck Slayer Stronghold. So I'm going to go ahead and block. Okay, Molten Vortex. So we would have had Lethal. Do we still have Lethal? No, we wouldn't have had Lethal because we don't have enough mana. So I'm going to play Windswept Heath. Can I afford to sack it? So like we make a 2-2 here. Next turn, we're going to block the Mutavault with the Wild and the Cattle. Block Curse Catcher with Seder. Block Curse Catcher with Soldier Token. So we can afford to fetch with Windswept Heath. Play Basic Plains. Play Elspeth. <clears throat> so we're going to make a token. And I think we need to sit back for one turn. And then we should be able to kill him next turn. Does this work on Molten Vortex? No. <laughs> so we couldn't attack there because we're going to definitely take two from the Kira, so we can't let either of the Curse Catchers hit us. It's really weird that he's not drawn any Lords in this entire game. It's also kind of unusual that he has main deck dismember. I don't see that a lot. Main deck Kira is also a little interesting. So he's definitely expecting a specific metagame with this list. Or maybe this is just what the deck looks like now and I haven't checked it for a couple of weeks. And if he has a Lord right now, it doesn't really do that much because, okay, so what is this? So he's going to attack us with Kira. Um, depending on what is in his hand, he actually needed that Kira to stay back. There's a possibility that he has Vapor Snag here and we're just dead. Lord of Insight. Okay, so there's the Lord. It's not Vapor Snag, and I believe we kill him now. Um, do I want Life from the Loam? I think Life from the Loam is better than anything we could top deck. So what I'm going to do is plus Wild Nakatl. If he has another Kira, he can violate. Okay, yeah, he's dead. Okay, so we're going to bring in the Pyroclasms for sure. We're going to bring in the Rending Volleys. Uh, we're going to take out the Pride Mages. We're going to take out a Dauntless Escort. We're going to take out one Obliterate. And then let's sort this, see what else we want to do. I like the Nicotles and the Fleece Mains. I want to keep up pressure and they survive Pyroclasm. I like the Elspeths. We can probably cut one Xenagos. I want to keep the Molten Vortex Life from the Loam package because he has a lot of guys that we can kill. We want to kill all the Lords if we can. So yeah, I think we're going to cut a Xenagos. Um, how good is Dauntless Escort? Is that better than Pride Mage?
Actually, let's cut the Dauntless Escorts, bring back in the Xenagos, and bring in the extra Ghost Quarter because he has Mutavolts. So let's try this. Dauntless Escort is our most expensive 3-3. Three, three. Um, it's good with Obliterate, but we may not be doing that this game. Like, we were able to beat him the first game without having to use Obliterate. And even if we need to be on the Obliterate plan, we still have Planeswalkers and Fleece Mane Lions. And a lot of that first game was that he did Mulligan, so... Okay, so we can go and get a Stomping Ground here, play Wild Nacatl, second turn Plains, Path something. Four land is a little bit heavy, but we do have the Xenagos to play on four. I'm going to keep this. He mulliganed again. I'm a little bit tired. He's on the play. He's got Minamo. Let's see if he has Aether Vial. He has Curse Catcher. Okay. I would rather play against a turn one Curse Catcher than a turn one Aether Vial. Because the turn one Aether Vial is going to give him just a lot of mana over the course of the game. Additionally, our Wild Nakata is a 2 2, so he can't even attack with the Curse Catcher unless he plays a Lord. And if he plays a Lord, we'll take the hit to 2 and then path the Lord. Spreading Seeds. Okay, that's fine. That's absolutely fine. Uh, we will just fetch a Sacred Foundry with our Windswept Teeth, and our Nakata will be a 3-3. Three, three. Um, we don't have green mana, so that's a little bit of an issue because a lot of the deck is green. And we want to have the Xenagos in play. There we go, green mana. Okay. So let's grab a Sacred Foundry. Um... So I'm deciding if I want to attack here. Like, we've already taken 7 damage from our lands and from his Curse Catcher. And if he plays a single Lord, we can still block the Curse Catcher and we can path the Lord. Um, yeah, I think I'm going to just pass here. That may be wrong, but I just don't want to take a ton of damage. Because we're going to have to use this fetch to get a forest, so it's another point of damage that we've basically already taken. Okay, there's the turn 3 Aether Vial. That's not nearly as scary as if he played one on turn 1. So there's Lord of Atlantis. Okay, so he's going to attack with Curse Catcher here, thinking it has Island Walk, and we're going to get to Path the Lord and block the Curse Catcher. Like there's not really card advantage because he gets the the land, but it is pretty good board advantage. Okay, so there's an obliterate that we can play towards with the Xenagos. Um This time I do get to attack because he doesn't have well I guess I should have kept back because of the Mutavault, but whatever. Is this a foil? Nice. If he plays a lord here and attacks with me to vault, that's kind of bad. I probably should have not attacked. Yeah, okay. So we're actually in a little bit of trouble. Does this guy give himself Island Walk? He does not. Okay. So we're going to go down to 9 here. 
after we sack our fetch. Um, I'm going to grab the other stomping ground, I think. Or, yeah, stomping ground. Because of Molten Vortex is better than Temple Garden. And let's see what we draw. Pyroclasm. Okay, so here's what's... Here's the deal with Pyroclasm. We can hold it and hope that he plays another creature, but if he plays another Lord, then we can't kill anything with our Pyroclasms. So I'm just going to use it right now. Like trading a two mana spell for a two mana spell is just absolutely fine. Nothing wrong with that. It makes his Muta Vault back down to a 2 2 that I can block. And next turn we'll be able to play Xenagos, make a token. And then I'm just going to sit back and try and obliterate him out if we resolve this, then it goes. This is a curse catcher again. You got it. So we should not have attacked. He should be at 20. Uh, we should not have a wild. Well, I guess he has island walk, so never mind. So it really doesn't matter. Like we got three damage in, and it maybe affected how he played the game. So this is another lord. Okay, so it was good to use the Pyroclasm, but we're still in a lot of trouble. I don't think we have any way to get rid of this land. We have Knight of the Reliquary, but we can't sack it because it's an island now. If we can draw another path or another Pyroclasm, then we're doing pretty good. Otherwise, we're in trouble. Um, Branding Volley also is good. That's better than Path because you can't counter it with Curse Catcher. So let's go ahead and play Xenagos and make a token. So we have a board presence here. And then pass. Actually, okay, so like here's the consideration. We can wait until he attacks before we use the Rending Volley, but if he ticks up Aether Vial and flashes in Kira, actually that doesn't work. Kira is when it becomes not, okay, so there's actually not really a downside that I can think of off the top of my head here. So I'm going to wait for him to attack. If he has another Lord, we do die. That's the, that's his out in this situation. And he keeps his Aether Vial on two. So he doesn't have a Meryl Redre. Okay, so he's gonna attack with these guys. I need I just need him to not have a lord. We're going to rending volley the lord. Oh, so this is a pretty tense moment right here. What is this? Dismember on wild in the cattle. Okay, that's fine. I that's yeah. That is like not the worst thing he could do, but it's still fine for us. Because we're gonna get to trade with this Muta Vault and just take one damage. Okay, so let's play a Slayer Stronghold. Let's make a guy. And we can actually attack with it when we use the Slayer Stronghold because it gets Vigilance. So we'll get in there for four and then still be able to block the Curse Catcher. And now, even if he has another Lord, um, if that's all he has, we're still not dead because the Curse Catcher will only get in for two and will put us at one. 
and then we can obliterate. Uh, yeah, okay. Okay, so here is a Lord, presumably could be a Silvergill Adept. Harbinger of the Tides. So yeah, giving this guy Vigilance was actually really good. Um, now if he has a Lord, we're dead, but that's just how this works. Like, he has no cards in hand, so he has to draw it right now. So what we're going to do, one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, we are going to blow up everything except Zinigos. So he can't do anything about this, it's uncounterable. Like, I guess if he has a bounce spell, he can bounce his any ghost in response. Okay. Mm. So, we'll see what he thinks his outs are here. Um, he could have another island in his hand, would be pretty good. Like, that would let him cast some of his spells but we get to make a 2-2 every turn yeah so that's how the deck works if you get to the late game you just want to have a planeswalker and cast obliterate they end up with nothing you end up with a powerful permanent on the board and generally that's just game <laughs> so let's go ahead and find another map The wait time on queues is much better today. Okay, so we're on the draw again. This is a mulligan. This is not great, but I think it's a keep, and we don't want that. Okay, so this is probably some kind of burn deck. I'm going to let this come into play tapped. I might want to path something, but the thing that I'm pathing is probably only going to deal two damage to us anyway. Yeah. So we're taking an extra two from Lava Mancer here, but we would have taken two from this, and we don't. Like, it's not important to play Life from the Loam next turn. Okay, so we're going to go and get a Stomping Ground. I'm going to um, not path the Lava Mancer upkeep because he doesn't have anything in his graveyard. So this is like actual mono red. This is a budgety deck. I don't know. Like, I've played against the... the Naya Atarka's Command Burn decks and that's a little bit difficult. I haven't actually played against the red deck, the just mono red version. Uh, just because it's budget doesn't mean it's worse against us. It's an entirely different deck so I don't know how this matchup goes. One thing to consider is somebody suggested to me that instead of Dauntless Escort I should play um, Kitchen Fanks because it's still good with Obliterate. So if this was a Kitchen Finks, we would be doing better. But I think 
just having a 3-3 should at least get a burn spell out of his hand. And if he plays Searing Blaze, I don't know how that works. I'd have to check the wording. I think it targets me, so we can't counter it by sacking the guy. But if he has, like, two Searing Bloods, we can counter the second one. Okay, so here's a Goblin Guide. Hopefully that draws us an untapped land that we can play Zenigos. Then Goblin... Okay, so this is Goblins. Interesting. Um, yeah. Okay, so we're going to go to 12 here. And then this will draw us it's sort of an untapped land. But it got us into Mountain. Okay, so we're going to play Zenigos here. We're going to make a 2-2. We're definitely not going to attack with it. So this is an incinerator or something. Okay, so there's the Searing Blood. And then he can kill Xenagos with this as well, which is pretty brutal. So I actually, for a while, had Primeval Bounty in the sideboard of this deck to bring in against the really aggressive decks. Um, so it's going to be unfortunate that we don't have that because Primeval Bounty plus Fetchlands, it just gains you a ridiculous amount of life. Okay, so he's attacking me. So we are at a very low life total, but we do have a Xenagos in play and we might draw a creature. Yeah, so there's a Dauntless Escort. Here's a Raging Ravine. Here's guy, 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 guy. Searing blood again. Wow. I did not expect him to have the second searing blood after he used goblin grenade on the Dauntless Escort. So are we dead here? We can block Young Pyromancer and take three and go to one and he has no cards. Okay, let's see what happens. Pyroclasm looks like it's going to be good against this deck as well, so we'll bring those in. Okay, so there's a free land if we draw Molten Vortex. There's a possibility we should block the Goblin Guide in case he draws another Goblin Grenade. But in every other situation, we just really want to get that Pyromancer off the table. Okay, so there's another Dauntless Escort. So let's make a token. Um, play Stomping Ground tap. Oh yeah, it's just always tap. Okay, so we have some options here. We can attack with Raging Ravine. And then we have a blocker and a blocker, but if he kills either of our blockers, we are dead. So I'm just going to play Dauntless Escort and lay from the lone back the Windswept Heath. Um, and what we want to do here is we want to draw Obliterate. Obliterate would be very good here. It would not stop him from top decking a Lightning Bolt and killing us but it would leave us with a board presence and get rid of all of his lands so he can't kill us with like um like any two mana burn spell like more searing bloods or searing blazes so let's see what happens here okay so he's attacking um yeah so I'm gonna do this I just don't want to lose to like some random thing that gives his guy trample <clears throat> I 
probably should no, that's this is the correct block because he can't trade here. Yeah, so he's got Titan Strength. So we're still gonna keep a Dauntless Escort. Um this looks fine as it is. Yeah. Just really want to draw obliterate right here. Path to exile. Path is not terrible. Um, I want to keep this guy back and also make another one. Path is not terrible because it lets us answer like if he's randomly playing like ball lightning or something but like we just need Tim to not draw a burn spell is what the plan is right here what is this burst lightning yep that's that's a burn spell okay so let's look at our sideboard we're gonna bring in the pyroclasms we're gonna bring in the Gideons we're gonna bring in the ghost quarter because of the Gideons we're gonna take out pride mages I don't think he has any enchantments we care about um, we're gonna take out two obliterates and one Xenagos obliterate would have won us the game last game but that doesn't mean it's good in this matchup, so I want to trim some of them because we're adding in more top end. And if we get rid of some obliterates, we don't need all the Xenagos. Um, do we want to change anything because he has Searing Blood? I think just taking out the Pride Mages is good enough for that. Also, we're going to be on the play here. Okay, so we can get Stomping Ground. Yeah, let's go ahead and keep this hand. I might want to get... Temple Garden because of the double white. Let's see if this gives us the land. It does, okay. So I'm going to go ahead and fetch Sacred Foundry now because we have a basic forest. Play basic forest because he knows about it. Back from the loan, get back one swept teeth. I want to keep an eye on his graveyard because we know he has Grim Lava Mancer. So I'm going to take an extra hit from Goblin Guide here in the hopes that he plays another creature we can Pyroclasm. If he has Titan Strength, that's going to really punish us. Okay, so we're going to take three here. Let's see if we draw another land. Wild Macabre is actually fine. That lets us play something on curve after Pyroclasm. Don't want life from the loam. Okay, so we're going to play Mountain. We're going to go ahead and Pyroclasm. Uh, he could have Mutagenic Growth to save both, but he does not. So we're going to play Wild Macabre. Um, I tentatively feel good about this game. Generally, when you don't have very many lands, if you draw lands, you beat the decks that have a lot of lands in their hand. But we also have some pretty good spells, so it's not like we're just super flooded. Don't want life from the loam. Okay. So in his hand, I would guess that he probably has a Goblin Grenade, 
probably has like a searing blood or a searing blaze um, and then a random assortment of creatures so like I know I can make a good guess about what like four of his cards are but then the rest of them could be anything besides basic lands okay so there is an obliterate and we have five mana already and a dauntless escort okay um yeah i just don't know what he has maybe it was just all creatures like maybe he had like four idol onto the great revel in his hand or something so that was good gideon was good obliterate we drew and it would have been okay so we don't need a bunch of those I kind of want the extra Xenagos because so many of his creatures are 1-1s one -ones or 2-2s two or 1-2s or whatever. But I don't want to sideboard out anything that we have. Um, Xenagos might be better than Elspeth. No, because Elspeth doesn't die to burn spells very easily. So let's go ahead and just keep it. If the loyalty was the same, then I would rather have Xenagos than Elspeth. So turn one, he has a Swift Spear. Okay, so let's see what we're working with. I think I want to go and get a Sacred Foundry turn one, and then turn two I can play Forest, Wild Nakatl, Molten Vortex, uh, turn three Slayer, Stronghold, Knight of the White Orc, Knight of the Reliquary. Yeah, um, the only decision here is do I want to take two life to cast Molten Vortex or Wild Nakatl right now, and I don't think I do. He has a spell he was thinking about casting pre combat. Wonder if it's a Titan Strength. Yeah, he has a Titan Strength. Okay. So this is a big chunk of life immediately. And then we're going to go down to 13 to get our Sacred Foundry. Um, we could go to 11 and just kill this right now. Um, is that the right play? I think I would rather try and block it. Okay, so we had another Swift Spear anyway, and then is this a Goblin Guide? No, Lightning. Okay, so it may have been correct to kill this. Um, I feel like we're going to lose this game. Like, we just didn't do enough. If I had drawn a basic mountain here, that would have been pretty good. Um, he has three cards in hand. So what we can do is go to seven and kill both of these, and then we're dead to three burn spells. I think that's correct. I did this in the wrong order. I should have killed one before I played the second land untapped. If we had a wild Nakatl to play there, that would have been really good. Like a wild Nakatl instead of one of these three drops. So 
So he plays nothing, which is really bad because I think that means he has a bunch of burn spells. Uh, Knight of the Reliquary is a 5-5. Five, five. Yeah, let's go. Okay, cancel. Knight of the Reliquary is a 5-5. Five, five. And the next turn we can make it a 6-6 six, six and cast Elspeth and make a token. So if he has a Goblin Guide and a Goblin, he can kill our Knight. But that's like two cards and five points of damage off our face. Lightning Bolt us. We're probably just dead here. Yeah, there's no way we're not dead. If he had no cards in hand, we would still probably be dead. It's just there's, we're at too, mo too little life against a deck full of burn spells. Again, if this was a Kitchen Fanx, we'd be doing better. So I definitely think there's there's an argument that this should be Kitchen Fanx. Um, so there's, uh, we could get a fetch land here and then fetch the basic planes because the difference between one life and two life is basically nothing. Uh, let me think about that. So what would kill us from one life that would not kill us from two life? Uh, unpumped Foundry Street Denizen, Unpumped Goblin Bushwhacker, Attacking Grim Lavamancer, and then does it change our clock? It doesn't change our clock, so I'm not going to do it. So one thing that could happen here is we could actually die to Searing Blood. So let's think about this. If he has Searing Blood, it would make sense for him not to have played it this game. So I'm going to pump the Knight of the Reliquary and pass. And this way we're dead to a haste creature that attacks for more than one. But we're not dead to Searing Blood or... I guess we are dead to Searing Blaze. Okay, so yeah, we're dead. Okay, so yeah, that's just... We really... It wouldn't hurt to have some life gain somewhere in the 75. Um, trying to think if there's a land that gives life link besides Vault of the Archangel. I don't think there is. So Dauntless Escort for Kitchen Finks might be a change we want to consider. So let's go ahead and play the last match, see what we get paired against. Uh, I'd like to play against Tron so you can see how those games work out. I'd like to play against Jund or Abzan to see how those games work out. Um, but we've played a pretty good sampling of decks. We've played Goblins, Merfolk, Twin, and Scapeshift. So like a combo deck, a control combo deck, a tribal aggro deck, and then a kind of aggro burn deck. So we've got a good spread of the field here. If we could just play against like a control deck or Tron, then I think we would have a pretty good image of what this deck does. really not winning any die rolls with this deck. Okay, so this hand is a mulligan. If this were a fetch land or a stomping ground, I would think about it, but probably still mulligan. <laughs> okay, so this hand is slow. Mm, but it's probably better than going to five. And path makes it pretty good. So we can go and get Sacred Foundry with this fetch land after we draw our path. So 
So Scalding Tarn could mean like a bunch of different decks. So let's see what else he plays in the next couple turns. So it's a Steam Vents. Still doesn't tell us anything. Island. Okay, so Basic Island probably is not Grixis. Could be Storm. Probably is not Delver. Delver would want to have a threat in play. Could also be Twin. If it's Twin, I'm glad we have the path. So there's a Knight of the Reliquary. Cascade Bluffs. Um, I don't know what deck plays Cascade Bluffs. I don't think Storm plays it. And if we were playing against Storm, I would have expected him to play Cantrips by now. Uh, I'm going to go ahead and get an untapped Stomping Ground. And then we can play Dauntless Escort or Knight. Um, Knight is too big for Lightning Bolt, so he might counterspell it, and then we can resolve Elspeth. So let's go ahead and see how that works out. My contacts are really bugging me, so if I have a weird look on my face, that's why. And then maybe he has two Lightning Bolts. Then Billion Click. Okay. I really have no idea what he's playing. Like, it's just good lands and a Vendillion click. We could be playing against Twin. We could be playing against... Okay, so he doesn't take Path, so it's probably not Twin. Or he has like two dispels in his hand, like I don't know. Okay, so there's a polluted delta. If he fetches black with this, then I think we're probably against Grixis control. Okay, so we're getting Vendillion clicked again here. No, but we're drawing another path. Okay, so. We can play Slayer's Stronghold. Um, pump the Knight to give it Vigilance. Attack. Sack Forest to get a Basic Plains and Path of Vendillion Click. I think I like that more than playing Elspeth into Cryptic Command Mana. Boomerang. Okay, I have officially no clue what is going on. Congratulations, sir. You have got me. But you know what? I bet he doesn't expect our deck to have Obliterate in it. Let's go ahead and do the fetch for planes plan here. I think where our life is still looking okay. I'm just going to do this now again. He might have Cryptic Command. 
If he has Boomerang, he probably really wants to bounce stuff, so Cryptic would definitely make sense. Um, this is probably going to get remanded or something, but it's just like we might as well do it and force him to have it and use it. We are in danger of dying from this Vendillion click. So there's a remand. Next turn we can play Knight of the Reliquary and two Path to Exiles, which should at least get the Vendillion click off the table. Important to note he did not get a black source of Polluted Delta, so I don't think he's Grixis. Okay, Wooded Foothills. Let's see if this path resolves. If it does, I'm going to use the Wooded Foothills to get a basic forest. Actually, do I want to get a basic forest? Next turn, I think I want to get a basic forest, but this turn I want to play planes to keep up the second path. Cryptic, draw a card, okay. So this is actually going to work out pretty well for us. We used two paths to kill a Vendillion click, but we traded a one mana spell for a four mana spell. And we get a resolve a creature. So I'm assuming his deck plays Lightning Bolt, so Dauntless Escort is not going to be as survivable as Knight of the Reliquary. But if he bolts Dauntless Escort, he's not bolting us. But he could have Snapcaster, so putting a Bolt in his graveyard doesn't really help us much. Um, and we're not dead to Bolt us, Snap Bolt us. So I'm just going to go ahead and play the Knight again. Let's pop out Graveyards. He's going to probably get a Tapped Shockland here. basic mountain okay he may be out of steam vents it's not unreasonable to only run a couple okay so he does have black mana interesting but he doesn't have black cards in hand so maybe he just like sideboards in tassigers or something like that okay there's another path um, I'm gonna use the wooded foothills and I'm going to get a basic mountain. Then yeah, this works. I'm going to play Dauntless Escort, but I'm going to Slayer Stronghold the Knight. He could Cryptic and bounce here. Or snap, yeah, okay, so what's going to happen here is he's going to snap Cryptic Bounce. And I'm going to sack Planes to go and get a basic forest and recast the Knight. Maybe I should have got a basic forest with the wooded foothills, but yeah, whatever. I don't get to keep up path, but like he doesn't have Tassiger in his hand or he would have cast it. And he doesn't have twin combo on this turn because he, wait, did he counter draw? Counter draw, okay. Okay, Um. so that changes this a little bit. I can get him for 10 damage. I think I want to do that. Um, I have to shock myself to do that. But I think it is worth it. A 
So now I am dead to bolt snap bolt. I could have hit him for one more damage by getting a fetch with the knight and then fetching temple garden, but then I would be dead to bolt electrolyze. So we're actually meaningfully playing around cards by not doing that play. Okay, so there's a lighthouse. Um, if he has a, like a terminate for the knight, that lighthouse is going to be very helpful for him. If he doesn't have an answer for knight, he's probably just dead. So let's see what he has for the knight. Like snap boomerang. I don't know why he's doing this on his turn. Or is he killing us? Blood Moon? Kiki Jiki. Okay, interesting. So he is twin. He's Grixis twin. Um. So if he has Deceiver Exarch here, we're dead. So I'm going to go down to four. Play Knight and play Elspeth and make a token. This shows him that we have Elspeth in our deck, but it also provides us a kill next turn if he doesn't have a combo piece. And it's entirely possible that he just wanted to play Kiki Jiki there to make a token Snapcaster Mage and block our knight after we Slayer Stronghold it. That's why we didn't attack. Okay, so this is a combo piece, looks like it. Oh, he's looting, okay. Uh, he still has a chance to kill us here, but if he doesn't have it in his hand, we're doing pretty good. So we discard Splinter Twin, and then does he kill us? He kills us. Okay. So we want the Rending Volleys. We want the Pride Mage. We want the Gideons. We want the Ghost Quarters. Uh, Dauntless Escort is pretty bad. Da, 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 da. Okay. Um. We put in the Gideon, so let's take out one Obliterate. I do like Obliterate in this matchup, but we have to cut some cards. Molten Vortex kills Kiki Jiki, so I want to leave that in. I also want to leave in Life from the Loam. Let's cut one of each Planeswalker because we're bringing in Gideons. And then one fleece vein lying because it's harder to cast if our opening hand has ghost quarter. And our best chance here is actually for him to think the combo is going to be dead, board it out, and board in like the mid range stuff like Tassiger and Karnos, which makes our rending volleys pretty bad but it will still kill Snapcaster, and if he has Creeping Tar Pit, it'll still kill those. And it's much harder for him to kill us. So this is a Mulligan, because there's no green mana. Um, this is a keep. Yeah, this is good. I'll fetch Stomping Ground, play Wild Nakao. Ooh. Um, 
Do I want to wait and draw that? I don't. So let's just ignore that because we're just going to shuffle it again anyway. So stomping ground or temple garden. We have the molten vortex, so it's stomping ground. Uh, play wild Nakadal. Next turn, we're going to play a tap sacred foundry and a molten vortex. And then I would like to draw a three drop. We don't have the Dauntless, it's just knights. So it would be reasonable to just draw a life from the loam or a fleece main lion as well. And we have a wild Nakata that we're going to get to do some damage with because he's not lightning bolting it. We didn't see lightning bolt or electrolyze out of his deck in game one. So it's possible he doesn't even run them. I'd be very surprised if he has no burn spells at all in his 75, but he may not be running like the full like four bolt, three electrolyze, two sideboard roast, whatever, whatever. That people sometimes run in twin lists. should have paid attention to where he scryed with this but I guess it doesn't really matter because we don't know what's in his hand already he could just be looking for lands and it's actually not bad that we're drawing lands because we have the molten vortex in play and with enough lands we can stop a deceiver exarch with the vortex okay second Elspeth is probably pretty bad unless he counters the first one with something besides remand and we're going to play it ahead of Cryptic on the curve. So he probably will just remand it, but he may have like remand into Cryptic. He's not bolting here, so we're actually doing pretty well. I could get super greedy and vortex him at the end of his turn with his planes and just hope to draw another land. But with two Elspeths in hand, I really just want to hit my fourth land drop, so I don't think that's a good play. Um, an interesting thing here is we only have the one wild Nakato. Um, okay, so let's think about this. I think we do want to play Elspeth here. Um, because it gives us a two turn clock, we can jump Nakato hit first down to five, jump Nakato hit him down to make one. This is a remand. Okay. And he didn't even bother leaving up red mana, so there's just no way that he has lightning bolt in his hand. If I draw a land next turn, it's an interesting decision as to whether or not I play it or hold it for Vortex. Um, I think if it's a red source, I will play it. And if it's a Raging Ravine, I will definitely play it. Otherwise, I might want to hold it. It depends on what he does. If he has like a Vendillion click and tries to get rid of one of our Elspeths, then I path it and in my upkeep then we will want to play a land. Okay. So let's go ahead and, well... So this is an interesting decision because he could technically just kill us here. So I think we're going to not play the Elspeth pre-combat. We're going to see what he does about our Wild Nakadal. He's pretty low on life anyway. Um... If we had a land in our hand, it would be really good to get him down to two life. So yeah, he's going to try and kill us here. So the decision here is, do I immediately path it or do I let him untap and then try and path it? And I think because we have a second path and we're not cold to dispel if he draws a dispel and just plays splinter twin I think we're gonna let him try and go for the combo this also doesn't give him an extra land on this turn <clears throat> so he's keeping back to block so I'm gonna go ahead and path it 
if he counters this, dispel. Yeah, I'll go ahead and path it again. Actually, I shouldn't have done that because he could have mana leak and then he gets to counter both our paths, which would be pretty unfortunate. But he did not have mana leak, so we're okay. Okay, draw, Sacred Foundry. Let's see what happens with this Elspeth. If this resolves and we hit him down to two, I'm not going to play that land. Okay, so there's another Deceiver Exarch. Unfortunate. Okay, I'm going to hold on to this land because if we draw another one, we can kill his Deceiver Exarch or we can jump over it and kill him. So sacking Delta, does he have Kiki Jiki here? That would be kind of sad. Okay, he does not get a Kiki Jiki mana. So if he doesn't have an answer for this Nakadal, and if he doesn't kill us, then he's dead. And he's aware of this, so he's digging for an answer or a combo piece. And he did not side out the combo, so we're going to keep rending volleys in if this goes to game three. And he drew Splinter Twin. Okay. Yeah, so we played against Twin twice. So we got enough play points for a two man. Okay, so that was the deck. Um, um, it's unfortunate that we didn't get to play against any of our matchups that I actually like. Um, we did pretty well against Merfolk, and we won a game in each match. And well, we won a game in several other matches. We didn't win a game in that last match. Um, I wanted, like, you really want to play against the other fair decks. So, like, Jund, Abzan, you want to play against. And then you want to play against Tron because you have a lot of sideboard hate for their deck, so you can keep up with what they're doing that's unfair. You don't want to play against decks that you can't interact with as well, so Scape Shift is just a nightmare. Excuse me. Burn decks are pretty bad. I think we're going to switch to the Kitchen Finks. And then twin, it just depends on draw from both sides. Like, if we had a rending volley in our hand instead of one of those paths, then we would have had two paths in hand, or we would have had a path in hand versus his dispel, and he would have maybe tapped out for something. But it just depends on what you draw. So, I think we have an adequate sideboard plan against twin. I don't feel like we need more cards there for that. Uh, we might want something against the burn aggressive decks. But really, we just wanted to play against decks that we didn't play against. So, like, we have three Ancient Grudge and three Crumble to Dust. So we really want to play against decks where those are, like, heavy hitters. So, like, against Affinity, you can Crumble to Dust their Blink Moth or Ink Moth Nexuses and just remove one of their win conditions. Or against Tron, you can make them play fair and set them back a mana at the same time. And then Ancient Grudge also comes in against both of those decks. So it's possible that we want to cut, like, two Ancient Grudge or an Ancient Grudge and a Quasali Pride Mage and just bring in stuff that's good against Burn or Twin or even Scape Shift. Someone suggested Ruined Halo and Nevermore to me as cards that we could bring in against Scape Shift. So I'm going to look into those and see, like, if they're effective and what they sacrifice to make the deck better against Scape Shift. And then we'll just see. So thank you for watching. Um, I will put a link to the first part of this series where we played these two matches in the comments for this video.